Have a good one, uh, Steve. We'll, uh, we'll catch you maybe next week. All right, usually do. I may be back, guys. I'm just going to take advantage of uh, the heavy eyelids for a bit again. You need to rest up so you can do the drive for crying out loud. Well, that's what I'm attempting to do, Bill. Uh, but I, you know, sleep's not one of my strong seats, unfortunately. But I'm trying tonight. I, I, I want to be rested for tomorrow because I want it to be a good day. Right, what right. Okay, well, do your thing, son. All right, it's in Charleston, Tommy. Good night, guys. Yeah, Roger. I heard you say that earlier. We talked about how far it was, remember? Yeah, 30 miles. Each direction. So, anyways, I'm going to be quiet. I may be back. We'll see. All right, seven threes. See you, Stevie B. Cooks, I can send you some uh, some uh, information. Yeah, you gotta you gotta check this guy out. It'd be a good start, you know, and get you you know get you uh, orientated to somebody that worked in the field, and uh, that's a good start. Bill, were you an Art Bell fan? What? Were you an Art Bell fan? No, I don't even know who that is.
XLR is still balanced, so it at least two signal pins and then one ground pin. But the plugs won't line up. Oh, okay, so you're not using it right now, you're saying. Right. Uh, they told me just to keep it down. So if you need it or anybody else needs it, let me know and I'll send it your way. I don't know if it made it, but it's a... Uh... Okay, I'll take a look. She has a... It's a four-pin XLR function. I'll show it around the outside. Uh, which one are you referring to? The one I'm on tonight? Well, I mean, is that what you actually wanted? Yeah, uh, see, I didn't, I didn't know that there was balanced and unbalanced XLR cables. So when I ordered this one, this was actually designed for a uh, generator, a started generator. It was not an audio cable. But when I when I disassembled the uh, the connectors on the end, it had a ground chain. To sol so I soldered a uh, jumper from there to the to the uh, mic ground. So I don't know if I if I made it. Balanced? I don't know. Well, I mean, the traditional balanced audio has, like, one pin is ground, which is also tied to that metal shield, typically, and then the two other pins are for signal. Uh, but the negative pin for signal is not connected to the ground pin, so it's uh, totally independent. Right, that is the signal ground. Yeah. But did you also need a wire for the mic switch, the PTT switch, and that's why yours was supposed to have four, four pins? Exactly, yeah. I see, okay. See, they misrepresented it on, on Amazon this description. They described it as a four conductor uh, cable. And I, I took that as a four, meaning four pin, but it, it's not what it meant. Oh, that's weird. I guess they were counting the outer shield as a separate conductor. I'm pretty sure that typically tied to pin one, though. Pin one is always the shield. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I haven't checked it. I've, I've got it still on the package. Uh, I'll, I'll check that and see. Because it, it, it is balanced. It's a, it's a balanced uh, XLR mic cable. So I'll, I'll have to investigate and see how they actually have it wired. Okay. But that, that was a question that I asked Blaine last night. Let me pose it to you as well. Around the outside, that's picking up the RF, and if that isn't connected at all to the mic signal, then that helps you quite a bit. they even have an unbalanced cable? Why, why would you choose to use an unbalanced cable on anything? Uh, why not have it? Why, why wouldn't they all be balanced?
wisdom did I? I don't hear any and I don't see any on the scope. Maybe it's okay. Yeah, it could be. I mean, there's a lot of times you get a you get ground loops, right? So there's current flowing through the ground, and you know, the ideal is that all your well, if you if, if if you look up that talk on what they call the pin one problem, that's the uh, um, probably the best explanation where you want to keep your signal separate from the chassis unless you absolutely have to. And then that chassis, all the chassis are tied together, all at ground potential together. You know, I mean, there's just a lot of variables. There's a whole, there's a whole number of things that can cause ground loops and it's a pain in the ass. But you can break them with a little transformer if you get a uh, audio isolator transformer. I mean, a good one with a, a real wide range is actually kind of expensive, but uh, but they do make them. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of those. Yeah, I lucked out. Some guy on QRZ who had helped me with something else, um, you know, I chatted with him a while ago, and, oh, he sent me something else. This, this nice guy was in there when I was a new ham. He actually sent me a whole kit to build a PTT switching relay thing. I haven't yet built his because I had already built my own by the time his thing came. But, uh, but that was sweet. But then later on I was talking to him because his background is in uh, uh, mastering vinyl, like literally cutting records. And he, uh, he, he you know, I was talking to him about audio transformers, and he goes, oh, well, let me check my junk box. I'll send you a package with, I don't know, five or six different transformers, and, you know, two or three of them were modern Chinese ones, you know, they were a couple bucks or something, but a couple of them were these great old classic ones that are like a uh, hundred bucks or more, and they're full range, you know, like like 10 hertz up to up to. 40,000 hertz or something, you know, so they'll cover anything audio-wise. They're really nice, and that's what I put in. So I, I, I did finally resort to using a transformer when I have this set up with all my audio gear, so I'm always getting a tiny residual ground loop on most gear. So when I finally used the isolation transformer, that solved it. I wonder what made the classic one so much different. Was it the iron or the, the iron used for the core or something? I don't know. It's 480, but... K0, okay. Yeah, just the design of the transformer, you know, how it's wound, what the materials are. There was a lot of effort went into it to engineer it specifically for audio. Can't beat the old. No, no. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that there's modern transformer designs that could do it, but uh, you know, but I didn't find anything that was of a reasonable price that handled full audio range, you know, 20 or even like 20 to 10,000 hertz, which would be plenty for ham radio. I didn't. Yeah, I was having trouble finding that sort of thing even. How Hyle sells one on their side. Yeah. What is it? It's like a hundred bucks or more. I think it was eighty or something. Uh not too bad. I don't know what frequency that goes down to. So they only sell one, but I don't remember the specs on it. That's because we can only hear so much and he won't go beyond that. That makes sense. Well, Hyle said that numerous times. Most people on amateur radio don't transmit a whole lot below 100 or maybe 50. But there's a big difference between 100 and 50. I mean, here on that 50 and here on that 100, you know, you lose a lot of bass doing that, depending on what you're looking to it from. If I go back to, back to 50 there, you know, it's a, it's a different sound. I'm listening to it in 76-year-old ears. Well, not enough to make any difference. Yeah, 
Well, it depends on what your speaker is, you know, whether or not you're looking with headphones or speakers that can mm -hmm. reproduce the low frequencies. You know, if it's like a four-inch speaker, then no, you're not going to have much difference. You've got headphones or a stereo with a, you know, six, eight, ten-inch speaker, then you'll hear it. Uh, I, bought, I bought a pair of brand new Bose Companion uh, Series 2. Uh, brand new, still sealed in the box. Yeah, I heard you say that last night. Oh, I didn't know if you were still there. I'm really looking forward to getting those. the past couple of weeks. Now I can't hear you. Double. There you 